All right, let's get a little bit deeper into stoichiometry, still in chapter three here. And the most important aspect of doing stoichiometry is to get to moles. Okay, moles are the gateway or the bridge. Okay, you'll, you'll hear me throughout the coming videos refer to the mole bridge. All right, so I enjoy fantasy and science fiction and things like that, and I enjoy the, the imaginary concept of a bridge that's guarded by a giant armored mole, but that's beside the point. Moles are how you get from one side to the other, from one thing to another in a chemical equation. Sometimes you may have a one path to get to moles, and then you cross the mole bridge, and then you have a different path away from the mole bridge. But the main thing is getting across the bridge. So if you know moles, you can get anything else you want out of that chemical equation. So um, example problem here. So how many moles of O2 are produced from the decomposition of 1.76 moles of potassium chlorate? All right, so we need an equation. You cannot do stoichiometry without an equation, okay? because you have to have the coefficients from that equation in order to do the stoichiometry. So our potassium chlorate solid is going to decompose into some potassium chloride solid and some oxygen gas. Right now, make sure to balance Right? I'm not generally um, prone to being tricky with um, exam equations, but it would be a really easy thing for me to give you an unbalanced equation and ask you a question about it. Okay, so don't take for granted that it's balanced. All right, so let's go ahead and balance this. And when we do, we'll find that we should have a 2 here, a 2 here, and a 3 here. And I would suggest pausing this video, go through that process yourself, and make sure that I've balanced it correctly and that you can get the same answer. And then go ahead and start the video back up. But, so I wanna go from potassium chlorate to oxygen. Okay, I'm, I'm already at moles. Right, so I don't have to do anything else. I'm already at the foot of the bridge. All right, I'm given 1.76 moles of potassium chlorate. So I'm standing at the foot of the mole bridge. So I just have to cross it. So I'm gonna start with my given information, just like always. And I'm gonna write a um, conversion factor that has moles of potassium chlorate on the bottom. So that's the easy part, straight out of the equation. So two moles of KClO3. And I wanna to get to oxygen. So I'm gonna put the oxygen on the top and straight from the stoichiometric coefficient of three, oops, excuse me, that should be a two there. Three moles of O2. So my moles of potassium chlorate will cancel out leaving me with moles of O2 as an answer. 2.64 moles of O2. Now before we get any farther, let's make sure that we understand how sig figs work with this type of problem. I wanna make something clear that these are counting numbers. All right? three moles, two moles, they're counting numbers. And counting numbers have infinite sig figs. They're exact. Okay, so when we want to decide how many sig figs should be in our final answer, we're gonna go with three from our initial information. All right, so let's do another type of problem. So let's say what mass 
of O2 is consumed, to make 6.86, oops, sorry, 6.86 grams of C6 H14O4 by the following reaction. So we have the reaction is 2 C6 H14 O4. Um, I think I've got that worded funny. What mass of O2 is consumed, let's say, and not to make, but to, <laughs> to burn. Okay, got that worded strangely. Um, so our equation, right? So we've got uh, this would be some sort of hexane, hexanol, something or other. Um, plus 15 O2s. And when we combust, we've got O2 as one of our reactants, so when we combust a hydrocarbon, our products are only CO2 and water. And we've got 12 CO2 gas plus 14 H2O liquid. Okay? So right now we are at grams and we're asked for a mass of O2, right? But we still have to cross the mole bridge, right? So now we have a path to get to the mole bridge, right? We're not standing at the foot of the mole bridge like we did in the previous uh, example. Now we have to go to the bridge. And so we need to get to moles, right? So our given information is the 6.86 grams of C6 H14O4. Right, in order to get to moles of C6H14O4, I use molar mass. Right, because molar mass has the units of grams and moles. I'm at grams, I want to get to moles, so I use something that has those units. So one mole of C6H14O4, and if I add up the masses of all of those atoms, the six carbons, the 14 hydrogens, the four oxygens, I get a mass of 150.2 grams. All right, so our grams of that will cancel, leaving me with moles of C6H14O4. And that comes out to be 0 0.0457 moles of C6H14O4. Now, as we go through these types of problems, it may feel really tedious to write all of these labels. Okay? And you're going to be really tempted to just not label things. And I really want to caution you not to go down that path. Okay? Your labels will save you, will save your life, um, as it were, your, your mental life um, as you're trying to complete these problems. Because if you make a mistake somewhere along the way, if you have used your labels, you will be able to find your mistake. Okay, but if you forego the labels, if you just say moles over grams and don't label what those moles go to, it's going to be really hard to find things if you do make a mistake. Right, so now we're at moles of our compound. So once I'm, out, I'm at moles, I can cross the mole bridge and get to the moles of oxygen. Okay, and we've got our C6H14O4, we've got two of those, and our O2 is what we're trying to find, and we've got 15 of those. So two moles, C6H14O4, and we've got in our equation 15 moles of O2. So we come out with 0 
moles of O2. And remember, we got to keep track of our sig figs. Those are counting numbers, right? So we don't have to consider those counting numbers when we're guessing, not guessing, but looking for sig figs. So I've got three sig figs in my initial moles, so my moles of O2 should also have three sig figs. But I'm not done yet. Right, so remember our question wanted mass of O2. Right now I'm at moles of O2. So if I've got moles of O2, I can easily get to the mass. Now remember there's two atoms of oxygen there. So the molar mass of oxygen is 32 grams per mole. Right, so remembering that molar mass can be used as a conversion factor, I can have that moles on top or moles on bottom, however I need it to be. All right, so my moles of oxygen will go away, leaving me with an answer that is grams of oxygen. And we come out to be 10. 968 grams of O2, and to the correct number of significant figures, we will have 11.0 grams of O2. Okay, and that's grams of O2 that have reacted. Okay, so the important thing with these problems is that you have to get two moles before you can get to the other thing. Okay, now if I wanted to, I could string this all together in one long problem. So just to show what that looks like, let me see here, I've got 6.86. Hopefully you don't get seasick because I'm gonna be going up and down a little bit. 6.86 grams of C6H14O4. And my first step was up here in blue was to convert to moles of that. And that was 150.2 grams. And then I had my next step was 15 moles of O2 for every two moles of that. And then my last step was to go to grams of oxygen. Okay. Now let's take a look. Because I've been careful about my labels, I can go through and check that I've put all my conversion factors in there correctly. Because my grams of C6 will cancel out grams of C6. And then my moles of C6 will cancel out my moles of C6. And then my moles of O2 will cancel out my moles of O2, leaving me in the end with an answer that is grams of O2. All right, so because I've been careful about my labels, I can go through and check that so that I've set up all my conversions correctly. Okay, and in the end, I would end up with the same answer, 11 grams of O2. All right, so if you're comfortable with doing this nice long chain thing, that's how I'm going to be, as I move forward through this unit, that's how I'm gonna start writing these things. But I wanna make sure that you all understand that it's perfectly acceptable to part this up into individual steps like we did initially here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video here. And when we come back, I've got a wonderful doozy of a problem for you um, concerning using density and percent mass and stoichiometry all in the same problem.